In this video, I'm going to discuss the differences between yoga and kin stretch. I am not going to compare the two and tell you that one is better than the other. That is not the purpose of this video. Instead, I just want to outline for you the differences between the two because often when people hear kin stretch, they think yoga. And in reality, the two are very different practices. And before we get into that, I just want to outline I am a kin stretch instructor and I have been for years. However, I am not a yoga instructor. Because I'm not a yoga instructor and I understand that my knowledge in that area is much more limited as compared to my knowledge in kin stretch. I've reached out to Vanessa Park Pancari. Vanessa, I'm so sorry if I butchered your name. It's Italian and I'm far from fluent in Italian. However, Vanessa is actually in my online kin stretch subscription and she is a wonderful yoga instructor. And so she is very knowledgeable in that area. So thank you, Vanessa, for helping to make sure that I'm on the right track with all things yoga in this video. So in a very general sense, kin stretch is a mobility training practice developed by functional range systems. And it seeks to improve mobility, body control, strength, joint health, along with a number of other things. And it has progressively increasing efforts and sometimes even maximal efforts. In contrast, yoga is another movement practice that seeks to connect the body with the mind through things like your breath, mindfulness, movement, and meditation. So in a yoga class, you'll often experience yourself moving through various postures and positions while bringing attention to what you feel in your body and in your mind as you move through those postures or spend time in those postures or positions. Yoga classes can vary drastically depending on the type or style of yoga, and there are many, and the yoga instructor that you have teaching you. They can be very dynamic or they can be very calm, very restorative, or anywhere in between. Similarly, kin stretch classes can also vary a lot depending on the type of kin stretch class, meaning if it's focused on a specific joint like the hip, or if it's focused on a specific movement like a squat, and it varies depending on the instructor that you have teaching you as well. So what might help you understand the differences between these two practices is looking at how the same pose, like a pigeon pose, is used in yoga versus how it can be used in kin stretch. So in a very general sense, how you may see a pose like pigeon pose being used in yoga is that you may find yourself moving from one pose into pigeon pose, spending some time in pigeon pose and bringing some awareness to your breath, to your body, to your mind, and then transitioning into another pose. In kin stretch, it differs though. We might use pigeon pose as a tool in kin stretch. However, it's usually as a tool to access specific tissue or a specific part of a joint. So for example, we might be using pigeon pose to improve hip external rotation or to target a specific tissue in the hip in which case the goal is no longer about getting into the pose. It's actually focused more on getting specific tissue on stretch or loading specific tissue. So we then often go around in the class and modify people's positions because everybody's body is a little bit different. So one person's pigeon pose might be very different than the next person, which might be very different than the next person, person. And they might have to manipulate each of their bodies a little bit differently to access the tissue or the part of the hip that we're going after. Once everybody is found that target tissue, then we spend a little bit of time stretching there, typically around two minutes if there's time for that in the class. Sometimes it's less if there isn't time to allow or to accommodate for a two minute stretch. But in that stretching period, there's often a layer of education. So typically in that time, you'll have your instructor, they'll be educating you about your hip or about what we're about to accomplish or how to do what we're about to do after that. And kin stretch, that is one piece that is also kind of unique to kin stretch in comparison to just most fitness instruction classes in general is that there's a big educational component to the classes. Once you've spent that time stretching, then we often move on to what we call pails and rails. When we do pails and rails, we're actually loading, so we're really working, the tissue that is at length and the tissue that is in a shortened position that pulls us into that stretch. If you don't know what pails and rails are, I'll put a link for that in the description below and you'll find a video outlining exactly what pails and rails are as well. After that, we're then increasing control and strength in those positions. So after we do our stretch and we do our pails and rails, we're often then doing some strength training or some work to build control in those positions so that your nervous system knows how to actually use those positions. That might be passive range holds, that might be liftoffs, that might be eccentrics or any one of a number of tools that we'll often use in that scenario. Now that's just a general idea of how a pose is typically used in yoga versus how it's typically used in kin stretch, knowing that there's a lot of variability within each of those. Now because in yoga we spend a lot of time in specific positions, often bringing attention to our mind, to our body, to our breath, we might be down regulating our nervous system, etc. We spend a lot of time doing what we would call passive stretching. 
or just kind of sitting in a stretch. And that's really great for improving flexibility. When we look at kin stretch, kin stretch is a little more focused on mobility. So although we do spend some time in a passive stretch, just kind of relaxing, maybe listening and being educated in that time period, that's then followed by strength training in those positions. And that's where we start to develop what we would call mobility or active range of motion versus flexibility and passive range of motion. If you don't know the difference between those two things, I'll put an image up here somewhere where you can see somebody standing with their leg on somebody else's shoulder in hip flexion. Now that's a demonstration of passive flexibility because the other person is holding their leg there and probably even brought it into that position. When we look at mobility, mobility is a question of how far can you bring your leg up with your own muscles without anything else helping you. And so for that, we actually have to have a strength element to it. And that's what we would call active range of motion or mobility. So you'll see a little bit more of the mobility work in kin stretch and a little bit more of the flexibility work in yoga. There's a little bit of both layered into it, but there's a far stronger emphasis on active range of motion and mobility in kin stretch. Now, one of the biggest differences between yoga and kin stretch, in my opinion, is that when we look at yoga, yoga classes are often very parasympathetic, meaning it's often very calming and very relaxing for your nervous system. That's not to say that in a yoga class you're not working. They can be very dynamic classes and still require muscular effort. However, the overall impact on your nervous system is often one of down regulation or it has more of a parasympathetic bias, meaning it pushes you a little bit more towards rest and digest. In contrast, when we look at kin stretch, kin stretch classes can be very sympathetic or very physically intense, which is not a bad thing. It's the same as when you go to the gym and you do a hard workout, you get a very sympathetic response from that. And that drives the adaptation that we want. And that's what happens when you're working hard with your body. So because in kin stretch, you're often using high or even maximal muscular efforts, your nervous system and your tissues all get ramped up when you're doing it. That's why a lot of kin stretch classes will often end with something like breath work to try and bring your nervous system back down. And if you're one of those people that is very highly stressed, I think that's just a really good practice to just end your kin stretch classes with in general. Even if the kin stretch class itself doesn't have that built into it, just spending a little bit of time working on your breathing or even doing more yoga style breathing after a kin stretch class can help to bring you out of that, that stress state that we have to get into when we're training and bring you back down into a calm, restorative baseline state. So those of you that are familiar with kin stretch and have done a lot of kin stretch classes will likely empathize greatly with the guy from the photo before that had his leg up and was shaking because in kin stretch classes, that'll often happen. You're often working really hard, your muscles will be shaking, and that's a lot of the times built into the classes. Not in every class because like I said earlier, just like with yoga, with kin stretch, every class is different and they're not always really high maximal effort, but it isn't uncommon in kin stretch. And one of the best ways to understand and fully appreciate the differences between yoga and kin stretch is to try them both for yourself. Actually feel the differences between the two types of practices. Like I said, one is not better than the other. They're just very different, but they both have a lot to offer. So by experiencing it, you can fully appreciate that for yourself. I'll link one of my own free YouTube videos up at the corner of this video when it ends and down in the description below. You'll also find a playlist on my channel that has multiple free kin stretch classes in it. And I'm gonna link Vanessa's YouTube page on here as well because she has a ton of wonderful YouTube videos available on her page for yoga. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and you can leave them in the comments below.